Well, hey folks, I'll try to make this quick. I know we're all pressed for time. We got lucky, our company name starts with an A, so I got to go first. Uh, so next slide, please. So uh, in terms of forecasting, right, uh, setting the stage here, right, this is, you know, we're one of the few vendors that that shows this topic for, for some reason. Um, and, and this is part of our philosophy when we think about uh, like, what is the point of forecasting and like how we approach it as a company. It's not, we're not here to like try to predict the future as, as fun as that may be. Um, I saved that activity for Sundays when I bet on NFL games. Um, but the, the whole idea here, right, is we wanna inform our uh, companies to be able to take meaningful action uh, in the present. And I underline that uh, for a reason. So ne ne next slide, please. So uh, in case you guys really don't know, uh, uh, about our chair. We're a relatively new member of the FinOps Foundation. And uh, what we do as a company is really help uh, with any type of cost savings opportunity that uh, does not potentially impact infrastructure. So anything that is shaded in this graphic here on the right, typically around uh, optimizing your commitments and helping uh, negotiate uh, your rate optimizations uh, with vendors, that's something that our platform uh, you know, is designed to uh, help uh, companies uh, accomplish, right? And so really like focusing on this concept of like commitment planning first and foremost, like we have found that for most organizations, like this does not occur in a vacuum. You have to have a longer term business context of uh, what type of commitment plan you want to undertake based on your, your business scenario. So uh, ne next slide, please. So, the approach that we've taken is to offer a free utility that we're calling uh, the Scenario Planner. It's, it's very uh, uh, fun little name there. And the uh, approach is very simple. It's, it's available for free. Uh, the, our chair of business model is this kind of uh, freemium uh, approach, but um, you can leverage this tool without even having to sign up for our chair. Uh, and it's really like kind of two components. The first is a free cost calculator where you can like come in and manually add, uh, you know, infrastructure components, you know, everything from... Uh, you know, instances to the, all the uh, correlated uh, usage quantities, but uh, it's also, it's really more powerful if you actually plug in and what we can do is ingest your, um, your actually billing data from uh, the hyperscalers and build out a longer term uh, view into what uh, your cost trends may be, number one, uh, without taking action, number two, uh, by, um, you know, performing any possible infrastructure optimization. So upgrading to latest instances, right? Uh, any sort of activities you can do to really optimize yourself from a technology perspective, but then also, you know, primarily, you know, going back to our line of business, right, is helping you understand like what would be the long-term cost implications of adopting a uh, commitment strategy, right? So you take a look at your running infrastructure and understand, you know, that there's big differences in between the impacts of discounts based on what type of savings vehicle uh, you approach. So uh, just helping to understand like what are the trade-offs that you navigate by adopting one of these scenarios, we generate uh, built-in plans for you. Um, so the idea is you can very quickly and easily, you know, see what's going to be the long-term trends and impact of adopting a commitment strategy, uh, you know, doing things like resource optimizations. How's that going to impact your long-term uh, cost structure? And we typically see this being applied, you know, back to our uh, um, concept of like, helping you inform longer term discount uh, negotiations with hyperscalers is understanding like how that is uh, gonna be impacted, what thresholds uh, you wanna commit to. So uh, last slide, please. So uh, this is really our very simple three-step process, right? You, we ideally have you uh, plug into the platform. You can manually add your infrastructure components if you want, but ideally it makes sense to just ingest your data so you understand like, What's my, you know, kind of linear growth path look like? What are various scenarios based on certain growth rates uh, that we can help you model out? And then align that against a commitment purchasing strategy, maybe something that's more flexible, maybe that's something that's more long-term savings oriented. And then finally, right, with all those pieces in place, like understand what our long-term uh, spend could look like. So with that, that's all my time. Uh, thank you guys so much. Great job, Jim. You did it. And uh, who's next here? Jeff, let me know yeah. when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Ready to go. Let's do it. All right, go for it. Thanks. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Harris, and I am actually director of customer success now, so a new title um, at Yoda Scale. I've been with the company for about five years, um, and we provide SaaS software to large tech companies mostly uh, that helps them understand their cloud costs, uh, multi-cloud solution. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the topic today of forecasting. So from a 
ingredients perspective, what makes a good forecast? That's really kind of where we're coming at this quick presentation today from. So first ingredient we're going to talk about today is good allocation. Got to start by getting to a level of granularity that makes sense for your organization. Sometimes that's teams, sometimes that's applications, services. Uh, it really depends, but you need to at least get your costs broken down into this, uh, this level of detail that allows you to then forecast on those entities. So if you're trying to understand the cost of services that uh, work together or are driven by the same thing, you want to be able to allocate the costs into those same groupings and categories. Um, it's important to think about what sort of cost you're looking at. Is it the cash-based or amortized cost? Uh, and also to bring in costs from multiple clouds, if you're using multiple clouds, and group those into uh, like categories. And same thing with uh, Kubernetes clusters, right? If you're trying to forecast the cost of the Kubernetes environment, uh, you need to understand the individual containers and how they relate to each other and what drives their growth. So being able to get down to uh, the cost of a group of containers, and the other resources that might interact with those and allocate those is, is the first step. Next slide, please. Uh, next ingredient we're going to talk about today is, is a good model. So you need a model that you can trust that uh, is based on seasonalities, takes into account the different sort of time spans and how your costs change over time for your business. Uh, we also want to refresh that frequently so that as new data comes in, we're using that information to update our ongoing forecast. Um, and again, we are looking at forecasting in those same based on the same um, allocation structures that you've done. Go ahead and next slide, please. Uh, the last ingredient we'll talk about today is, is user input. So we've already got the allocation right. We're plugging that data into a good model. How do we iterate and how do we improve that model and improve the data that's going into it? Um, user input is key to this. So both providing feedback on anomalies, we don't want to uh, use an anomalous cost spike to build a forecast for the future. If that's an anomaly and an individual has confirmed it, you want to make sure that you're taking that into account when you're building your forecasts. Uh, same concept on recommendations. If we take a recommendation, if we're implementing our eyes or savings plans, all of these things should be taken into account when we're forecasting. Uh, and if there's been any tag changes, so if you're going through tag changes or hierarchy changes, changing sort of the way that you look at your costs, that also needs to be taken into account. Next slide, please. And kind of wrapping all this up, what are some tips and specifically some things that Yodascale helps with in this area? We do uh, help very much with the allocation side. We see that as foundational to a solid cost management strategy. Um, you want the data to be trusted across the organization. So we're making sure teams have the ability to provide their input and feedback about the data that's coming to them. Um, and we want to see really high user adoption and engagement so that that feedback improves, making sure that this cost data is distributed to the engineering teams so that the, the individuals that are working on the infrastructure have the ability to push that the, their feedback up to uh, the central cloud team. Um, pause it right there. Appreciate your time. Go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you. Great job, Jeff. And under time, that's great. Um, Clockwork is a technology based on research work from Stanford University. Um, our technology can identify and eliminate latency and bandwidth bottlenecks, helping you to do less, to do more with less resources. Next slide, please. As users, we're impatient. We expect everything to render in under a second. Any increase in latency will have a significant negative impact on your business. While cloud computing unleashes many opportunities, it also presents challenges. Say you go to the cloud and get 100 VMs of the same type. Given they have the same spec, you expect they have the same performance, but cloud VMs are now created the same. In fact, there are many underperforming resources. Second, cloud is a shared environment. Uh, it's opaque. When your application is running slow, is it because of high latency jitter in the network or a software bug? Or is it related to packet drops which result in application level timeouts and retries. Next slide, please. Next. You can click through, yeah. Um, with Clockwork software, you get a deluxe version um, of the public cloud. The foundational technology is our breakthrough clock sync system. Using software only, you can synchronize clocks to nanosecond level of accuracy is currently deployed by many financial firms for trading. Now we have the ability to identify underperforming VMs 
because we can control the clocks very accurately. If the VMs were on the same physical server, they have the same, same clock sync signature. Now, traditionally, to measure latency, you rely on round trip time divided by two as a proxy. With accurate synchronized clocks, you can get accurate one-way delay measurements, which allows you to pinpoint where the delay is really happening. Finally, latency is today addressed with over-provisioning. Say you see a spike in traffic or a spike in latency, you spin up new resources. Uh, we have solutions where we can help you to eliminate packet drops automatically, reducing latency and improving application performance without additional cloud resources. Together, they help you to run faster and uh, with fewer resources. Next slide, please. So there's a few click through here. Um, so typically I do a live demo, but I'm showing a few screenshots. So shown here is a boutique shop. Um, it's an e-commerce app built with microservices, um, uh, microservices architecture. Now using open telemetry, you can measure performance for every user journey. So um, now this is a system level view. Each dot represents a transaction. The y-axis is in the log scale. It goes from one millisecond to 10 seconds. With spike in traffic or competing workloads, your tail latency can go up to five to 10 seconds, which can easily lead to users clicking away. Um, today, what you do is you auto scale, you spin up new VMs, uh, which lead to higher cloud span. Now, as you know, packet drops uh, in networking layer leads to application level timeouts and retries since high latency here is a result of network congestion, uh, Clockworks automated congestion control solution, we can bring everyone down under one second with your existing uh, infrastructure. Next slide, please. Here's a before and after picture, right? So before you see five to 10 seconds of latency, after all your tail latencies, whether it's your max, your 99th percentile, your 98th percentile, a 95, 95th percentile, you all went down to under a second. This is gonna make your CFO happy. This is also gonna make your CTO happy. Um, thanks, finally- Thanks, Dan. Oh, I'm gonna to have to get you to wrap up. Do you have much more? That's it. All um, right, good job. Thank you. All right, Keith, if thank you're you. ready. I am see. ready. Keith Knowles with Advisor. And uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So we're all about, uh, today's theme is, is talking about reducing waste and how we bring visibility to problems. So we've kind of a centralized theme within our company. It's about your data, your way. So we, um, we do a few things that are a little bit different from a lot of the other companies that you've heard from today. Um, and also I felt like um, Rob Martin and uh, Yojendra uh, gave us a little bit of lead in earlier today when they talked about the granularity and the need for granularity within the clouds and how Google's moving towards that and the general theme for the cloud providers provide more granularity within the, the cost data. Well, we're there. We're, we have hyper granular uh, cloud data. We bring in both a combination of cost and performance data. We bring this all into a, an extensible data warehouse. We have real time monitoring. And we are multi-cloud. So I see a number of people ask about multiple multi-cloud. So uh, bring that back to the topic at hand, kind of your data, your way. If we go to the next slide, we do deploy our one of our solutions, Advisor Cloud Analytics. We do uh, deploy that via uh, customizable Power BI uh, interface. So you can create your own dashboards. We try to really help um, highlight problems or opportunities within the environment for cost savings. Uh, we provide a number of pre-built dashboards. These are just some snippets of different opportunities that we have, um, helping companies understand very quickly where their opportunities are to save money, to right-size um, their, their actions, uh, right-size their servers. When you look at some of the common things about, hey, how do I, how do I go and find um, unutilized resources? Finding unattached storage is actually pretty simple. Trying to find... Uh, VMs that are improperly sized or have opportunities for right sizing, a little bit more challenging. And that's where the granular data that we have really comes to light and helps, helps you make a recommendation um, to an engineer that will likely stick. So being able to see both things, see data such as uh, 
the the RAM, not just CPU, but bringing in five minute uh, increments of, of data so you can actually make a recommendation to your engineering team that's gonna go ahead and stick. If we go to the next slide. So how do we do this? So we bring in data, we ingest the data from multiple cloud providers. We bring it in through our advisor platform, which is where the magic happens. We normalize that data. Uh, we're bringing in again, both cost and performance data. And we do dump that into a data warehouse. So which uh, a lot of folks are moving towards data warehouses, we can bring up a data warehouse for a client in less than a day. So you then have access to that. You can combine that with other information within your environment. So whether you wanna bring in CRM data uh, for sales types of data, finance data, et cetera, to be able to ultimately get to unit economics uh, perspective and bring that in. But some of the key things is our dashboards are designed to really help you focus in on where are your opportunities for both cost savings, uh, identifying underutilized or waste uh, types of things. So very quickly, we can bring that, uh, bring those things to light. Highly flexible uh, from an environment perspective. And if we go to the next slide, we can also provide services to help you customize and augment those, those uh, solutions. So you have the ability to go ahead and incorporate that yourself, uh, extend it, or we can we can provide those services to help you um, augment and extend that uh, data set as well, as well as provide managed services around helping you uh, make the right decisions and recommendations as far as what you want to do to optimize your cloud. And I'll give you a few minutes back. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Keith. Good job. Anton, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Hello. Go, hello, go. everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Anton. I'm Chief Architect at Prophecy Labs. And Prophecy Labs is the multi-cloud uh, cost reduction platform. And one of our key features is called the Waste Manager, which is related to wasted unused resources. And what that feature is doing is basically constantly looking for uh, wasted unused resources. It's notifying you about those resources and you actually can perform the actions. You can click and remove the wasted resources. Uh, next slide, please. And while we're looking for those resources, we're also calculating the potential savings for that wasted unused resources. And this is the one of the notifications that we're providing to users in order to convince them to basically perform the, perform the actions to go and remove their unused resources. Uh, let's uh, go to the next one. And once we found the resources, unused resources, we're showing them as a list and you can uh, select a few of them or some or all of them, and you can actually remove them from here. If you're sure that you don't want to remove this resource, you can click archive button basically to hide it from the list and not to include this resource within your potential, potential savings. We're also calculating how much of the money you totally save for the, for the period or um, uh, how much you potentially can, uh, can save. Next slide, please. So what is waste for us? What kind of uh, resources we consider as a waste? We are looking for unused volumes, which is, which is clear. We're also looking for unused snapshots, the snapshots which were created from the volume and then you remove the volume and now you have a snapshot which is not related to the initial volume. That kind of snapshots we're looking for. We're also looking for idle, idle resources, resources which, which has um, CPU memory, are your usage uh, uh, zero for the last two weeks? Or we're looking for um, shutdown resources for the uh, last two weeks. As well as we're looking for unused IP addresses and for unused uh, VM images, which is the instance images or AMIs, uh, custom created AMIs, um, which are not used anywhere, not used within any of the template within your cloud account. That kind of resources we're looking for. Next slide, please. And um, we found those resources. What we're doing with those resources? Basically, as I mentioned to you, we're constantly looking for such resources. Once we found those resources, we're notifying, notifying you about that resource. Then we are providing the recommendation about that resource, like go and delete it. We're calculating the potential savings for you, how much of the money you will save. You can remove those resources from a from a different places, one of the places called the waste manager in our case. And then we are basically writing down the information about the, uh, how much of the money you saved, about your savings into the uh, reporting information and into the billing information. 
So then you can generate the reports and take a look on how much of the how how much of the money you saved for the last month, so this month, and what kind of resources you removed, and and so on. Also, all of those functionality has uh, API. We have a documentation, and basically you can automate with us, and you can automatically remove those resources just once they um, arrive. So once you have a new resource, you can you can create a rule and you can remove it. That's it. Thank you. Great job, Anton. Thank you. Rich, whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks everybody for sticking around for the last couple of minutes here. Um, you can go to the next slide. So there's obviously a lot of areas you can look to when it comes to reducing waste and unused resources. We're focused specifically on Kubernetes, which is a real challenge because the resources are assigned and managed at such a granular level. Uh, engineers have to make decisions about pod sizing. They have to try to take into account the variability of workloads. They have to manage this at scale across hundreds of services. And you know, tools like auto scaling can help, but auto scaling also has limitations and it also requires configuration decisions that affect efficiency. And at the end of the day, you know, what we find is that engineers have to guess at the best configuration and the decisions that they make have a real impact on cost and resource waste. Uh, next slide. So this is the problem that Stormforge helps to solve. Um, there's a lot of complexity in configuring and managing Kubernetes resources optimally, um, but that's a problem that machine learning is really well suited to solving. So we're all about providing actionable intelligence to configure your Kubernetes applications to run with minimal waste, but without sacrificing performance or reliability. And ultimately our goal is to empower software engineers to make smart resource decisions without having to spend hours manually tuning applications through trial and error. You go to the next slide. So the solution is pretty easy to adopt. Um, to configure it, you basically just select your cluster and which container resources you want to optimize, how frequently you want to get recommendations from the system, and whether you want to apply those recommendations automatically or manually. There's a couple other things you can optionally configure, for example, min and max resource settings and how much risk you're willing to tolerate in trying to uh, maximize your cost savings. And then our machine learning then basically starts analyzing actual resource usage from observability data that you're already collecting like Datadog or Prometheus, for example. Uh, once the machine learning has looked at enough data, we start recommending updated CPU and memory settings. So this could be hourly or at whatever frequency you specified. And if you're running a horizontal pod autoscaler, we automatically detect that. And we also recommend the target utilization setting for the HPA that will drive optimal efficiency. And then lastly, implementing the recommendation generally happens automatically unless you configured it for manual implementation in which case you can review and approve by clicking a button. And then the cycle continues. So we're essentially just always keeping your application running as efficiently as possible while your actual workloads change. You can go to the next slide. Um, last slide here is just a screenshot to get a visual. Um, the charts here are showing CPU and memory for your app. Um, focusing on the CPU chart at the top, just because it's a little easier to differentiate between all the lines. Uh, the actual CPU usage is the light kind of cream colored line. Um, the red line is the current resource requests. So the CPU that you would be using without Stormforge. And you'll see that line going up and down um, along with the actual usage, because in this case, we're running a horizontal pod autoscaler that's increasing and decreasing the number of replicas. But then the blue line is what our machine learning is recommending, basically saying that you could get by with this level of resource without risking performance or reliability issues. And so the red shaded area is the amount of waste that you're able to eliminate. And obviously if you add that up over time, it becomes um, you know, really significant across all your services. So that's all I have. Um, if you have questions, just shoot me an email, rich at stormforge.io and uh, thank you. Thanks Rich. And Casey Doran. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for sticking around. Folks, we're over time right now, so I'll try to go through this quickly. Also, so great to see a bunch of my old friends on here. I miss you guys. So um, sync, you can go to the next slide, Baz. So sync computing. Um, obviously, there's an enormous amount of pain in all sorts of parts of these large organizations around 
uh, you know, making sure the optimal resources are are in the cloud, you know, for the workload at hand. Sync's mission is to reinvent how this is done, how engineers provision cloud infrastructure to, to achieve business goals, really. We don't think engineers should be noodling on selecting infrastructure in the crazy sea of options, you know, hundreds of thousands of different combinations of things, right? And if you're just talking about one cloud provider, um, engineers should be innovating for their organizations. They should be being, they should be engineers, right? So this stuff should be automated as a lot of folks have talked about, but it should be automated based on cost and performance goals. It's not always the cheapest thing that you want, right? You, you may actually want to spend more uh, so your workload is more performant. And, and that's what we're trying to help with. We also believe that the current way that a lot of places think about right sizing is the reason uh, that we have trouble getting folks to take action. So let me talk about that a little bit more. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, so what we're doing at Sync, you know, obviously we're focusing on helping reduce waste like a lot of other tools do, but we're trying to do that in alignment with business goals. Like I said, that goal might be cost, but it also might be performance. It might be stability. If there's an end user on the thing, it also might be carbon footprint. And so our vision is to eventually include that as, as an option for folks. We also feel like um, really any good tool around this should be an engineering productivity tool. We should be helping engineers make the right decisions at the right time within their workflow, not expecting them, frankly, even to go to JIRA uh, to, to get a, a better option, but within the places where they provision resources. We also think that um, th these recommendations need to be credible. They need to actually be, con con you know, down to the workload level, what's running on that machine, um, not just based on CPU memory, et cetera. Um, we also really, our initial focus is on big data workloads. Uh, this is kind of a blind spot for a lot of organizations in terms of the ability to optimize uh, those specific pieces. And lastly, uh, continuous and proactive. Today's configuration and infrastructure for a certain big data workload not, is not tomorrow's. <laughs> so this is something that we need to do continuously uh, to make sure it's the right thing. We go to the next slide. So the Sync Auto Tuner, our goal is to improve developer productivity uh, by continuously tuning one or more, and currently we're focused on Apache Spark. So think AWS EMR, Databricks, um, in alignment with application and business requirements. We think this is part of CICD, um, not just fully automated, right? Somebody said in one of the previous talks that in most cases, a developer wants to see something, test it on dev, test it on staging, make sure it's not gonna break things. Our goal, uh, and we're not there yet, but in our vision is to make a PR with, with what we think is the best you know, recommendation for that specific workload. Uh, if you go to the next slide, and then lastly, here's just a quick snapshot um, of, of our user interface. So you can see in this case, um, this is for a Databricks workload running in AWS. You can see kind of where you currently are from a cost and runtime perspective. We then have made a whole bunch of predictions based on what cost and runtime would be with, with varied other infrastructure options for you. So you can make a choice. Uh, do I care about cost? Do I care about runtime? Do I want to be somewhere between to make sure that I'm stable? And then using our API, um, you, you can filter down to the most appropriate one for yourself and pull that into your CICD workflow. Um, and then just one more slide quickly. Um, just this is where you can find us uh, in the Slack or, or our website. Thanks so much, folks. Great job, Casey. Thank you so much. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to finops.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.